everyone welcome back to my channel today I am talking you through my travel skincare routine I have been traveling for the last two months I had about three days at home sometime within those two months but otherwise I've been on the road for a long time and using the same products consistently and I've seen a really big difference in my skin um, particularly with a couple of products that I've introduced and in my nighttime routine which obviously we'll talk about a bit later on in the video my skin at the moment is 100% clear I have no active breakouts whatsoever which is amazing it's been that way for a couple of weeks now I do still have some scarring as you can see from my old breakouts along here a little bit under there as well that's unfortunately where my chin rest sits for my violin yeah otherwise my skin is in such a good way so i thought it would be really cool to talk you through the products that i've been using i'm currently in christchurch and i'm staying at hotel 115 these robes are so snuggly they're really nice and i love this shower curtain <laughs> it's so cool keep calm and carry on but it's a little bit echoey because i am in a bathroom obviously so first step in my routine in the morning has been cleansing my face uh, i did take a couple of different products with me to the uk than what i've brought here to new zealand just because some things ran out or i just decided i wanted to switch them out so i'll talk about that as i go as well for cleanser in the uk i took with me my drunk elephant peaky bar cleanser which is like a little white bar cleanser and i actually really liked the way that that worked on my skin however it didn't really cope that well being traveled around in a little case it sort of started to get a bit gross by the end and started to disintegrate because it was like constantly kept in a little container it doesn't travel that well i don't think those bars so for this trip, I brought with me a decanted amount of the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Cleanser. This is like the milk jelly cleanser. I put it into a little moody bottle. I really like this one because it's so gentle. It's not a foaming cleanser. So you just, I use three pumps, so about that much, um, about a teaspoon, and you just rub it into your skin. And it just helps to sort of refresh and cleanse your skin without any surfactants. So there's no sort of bubbling agents or anything. You can see it doesn't bubble up or anything. And then I just rinse it off. Um, it does say on the bottle that you can wipe it away, but I don't really like doing that because I don't like to leave a residue. So I prefer to wash it off. Oh, why is my hair not behaving? And then my next step is a toner and the one I've been using and loving for quite a few months now is the Soonjung Relief Toner. So this is the small size. Um, this is the size I originally had. I loved it so much. I used it up. I bought a big bottle and I actually decant it into the smaller size to travel. And I just put a little bit on one of these sort of liquid water saving cotton pads. I'm very keen to get myself some reusable cotton pads for back home, but I have so many of these little cotton pads left to get through. So I think it'll be quite some time before I get around to actually getting reusable ones, because I think I want to use up the ones I've already bought. But at least these ones are really nice and thin, but I really love the idea of the new reusable ones, rewashable. Now I do let that dry on my skin, because the next product it's better to apply to dry skin. Um, and that is my BHA liquids. So this is a decanted amount of the Paula's Choice BHA liquid 2%. I adore this product. <laughs> I love it so much. This was full when I left for England two months ago and that's how much I've gone through. I use it just once a day in the morning and like it really just lasts and lasts and lasts. And this is by far my favorite BHA. It's the one that I see the best results with. If you're unfamiliar with chemical exfoliators, a BHA is designed to exfoliate inside your pores. So it's very good if you have quite congested, oilier skin types. If you have more dry skin types and you suffer with a lot of sort of surface debris that you need to exfoliate away, um, then an AHA is probably better for you, an alpha hydroxy acid, something like glycolic acid or lactic acid, whereas a BHA is traditionally salicylic acid. I find BHAs work better for my skin and I prefer to physically exfoliate my skin to sort of buff away the top layer, which I will talk about in my evening skincare routine. So now that my skin's a little bit drier, I'm going to go in and apply my Paula's Choice liquid. And I let this sit on my skin for about a minute just to absorb fully. If you're looking for something to really help the clarity of your skin and perhaps uh, reduce congestion and breakouts, then I think a BHA liquid is a very good place to start. And I personally do see quite good results with it. Some people don't, but it's worth a try, I think. Now, if my skin is feeling particularly dehydrated, especially if, say, I didn't drink enough water before going to bed, sometimes I wake up and my skin just feels a bit like lacking hydration i will use my the ordinary hyaluronic acid two percent plus b5 
I really, really love this serum. It's so nice. I use about a penny sized amount and I just like to press it into my skin. My skin's actually not feeling that dehydrated today, but I thought I'd just put it on for the purposes of this video. Sometimes with products, you might think high concentration is better, but with hyaluronic acid, I actually think that's not the case. I think a 2% is perfect for me. It's strong enough to see a difference, but it's not like so strong that it does the opposite of what you want. And then for moisturizer, I, at the moment, have been using the Clinique Moisture Surge. This is their 72 hour auto replenishing hydrator now when i was in the uk i actually had with me the hada labo moisturizer that i raved about in my korean skincare video i love 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 that product and i would have brought that probably with me to new zealand as well but i didn't have very much left in the jar and i was a bit worried i would run out while i was here so i decided instead to open up a fresh jar of the clinique which i had sitting in my skincare sort of backups um, area a product i haven't used in many years um, I used to love this way back in the day and I still do like it's been really nice Using this again and sort of falling back in love with it. I go quite generous with it because it's just so delicious Yeah, I can't really say though whether I like either one more than the other. They're both nice The Hada Lover one is potentially a little bit more affordable um, But they're both really nice. They're just very lightweight sort of gel Moisturizers particularly good for more sort of normal oily skin I think with dry skin you'd want something a bit heavier, a bit more sort of emollient. Oh, your skin just feels like juicy after. Oops, I just realized I forgot my eye cream. I usually do that before moisturizer. Eye cream, I've been using the Drunk Elephant C Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream. And I, oh, oh, do I love this eye cream. I actually only use it in the mornings just because I like, I don't know, I don't really feel the need to use it in like two times a day. And I just love what it has done for like the pigmentation that I had around my eyes. It actually works, it actually lightens pigmentation. I think it's a phenomenal product. I have a full size at home, but I have a couple of these travel minis, which they last a long time. Like I took this to the UK with me and New Zealand and I'm still going on it. And then my last step in the mornings is of course SPF. The one I've got with me in New Zealand is the Etvos skincare mineral uv serum so this is a very expensive like japanese brand of skincare this is such such a beautiful sunscreen it's spf 35 and it's pa plus 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 so it provides high protection for uva and uvb it's completely mineral based so it's physical screen it has the most beautiful skincare ingredients in it as well so it's actually helpful for your skin there's ceramides there's hyaluronic acid it's like it actually feels like it's a product that's doing more than just protecting your skin from the sun like it really is a beautiful product um but while i was in the uk i was using the can make mermaid skin gel for most of that time which is SPF 50 it's a little bit higher since it's summer over there I really really loved that product as well that one is a combo of physical and chemical but I pretty much used that up in its entirety while I was in the UK so I couldn't bring it with me here to New Zealand and instead I brought this one which as you can see when you first put it on your face it does look white it is a, a physical screen but it does blend in to be invisible if you do have though quite deep skin you might find this will leave a cast on me i feel like it does rub in eventually and doesn't look visible but for people with as you say a bit more deeper complexion you might find that this is just not invisible enough for you just put a little bit more on my neck too but oh, i just love it i feel like this has helped my skin be so like radiant it's just beautifully under makeup it doesn't pill it's very expensive, I think it was about 70 something Australian dollars. I bought this with a gift card from YesStyle that was provided to me from YesStyle, so I didn't actually pay for it. It's essentially like PR. Would I purchase this with my own money? <laughs> it's really hard to say because it's just so much money for a sunscreen and it's only 30 grams, so you go through it pretty fast. I'm still undecided, I'm still undecided. It's so nice, but I have also discovered quite a few sunscreens that are a lot more affordable um, that I still really like maybe not as much like this is definitely probably my favorite sunscreen that I've discovered this year but it is just that so much more expensive that's kind of like is it worth it not sure I will be doing a sunscreen video for you guys in a couple of weeks where I review a bunch of sunscreens that I've tried this year and some that you haven't heard me talk about um, so hopefully by then I've kind of made up my mind about 
whether I truly think it is worth its money. So stay tuned for that. And I also am going to have a video on moisturizers as well. So that is my morning skincare routine. Looking all glowy and juicy now. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come back to you very shortly with my nighttime routine. Alrighty, so nighttime routine. I have been starting by obviously removing my makeup or whatever is left of it because I did go to the spa tonight and the sauna and most of my makeup melted off my face. While traveling over the last couple of months, I've been using my little face halos to remove my makeup. These were created by Chloe Morello and they are fantastic. They actually work at getting everything off your face, like bright red liquid lipstick. I haven't tried it with waterproof mascara, but they seem to get anything and everything off with just water. So I love them. They're eco-friendly. It means one less product that I'm having to use on my skin and keep repurchasing like these are fantastic so I'm gonna wet this and take my makeup off so I'll usually use like one side kind of for like my face makeup and then the other side I'll sort of use for more my eyes I don't know why I do that but it's just something I do and the other reason I really love these is that they while they're very 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 soft and quite gentle on the skin they also kind of slightly micro exfoliate the skin in a way like using a flannel i like to do little circular motions especially around like my actual face not so much near my eye area i think my skin actually does react a bit better to physical exfoliation over using say like an aha to get rid of surface debris um, but as I say, I do use a BHA liquid in the mornings. I usually do this in the shower, but I wanted to show you guys. And if you do have any stubborn eye makeup, I find it sort of holding it on it for a bit helps to really get it off. Then I will go in and do a proper cleanse. And I've been using the same cleanser that I used in the morning. The Neutrogena Hydro Boost one, so three pumps of that. and then rinse that away. Then I'll use a bit of toner, which I was also using in the mornings, the Soon Jung Relief Toner. And then I will actually let that dry before applying the next product, because it does say to apply it to dry skin. So this is where I go in with quite sort of like treatment-y products to help my acne prone skin. Now I'm probably at the point where I can stop using them, I think, but I want to wait till I go back to my doctor to talk to her about it as to whether she thinks it's a good idea, whether I should wean myself off it. But um, a couple of months ago, you guys know I was dealing with really bad breakouts all over my chin. And my skin has healed so much. And that's because a couple of months ago, I actually went to my doctor and was like, can I please have tretinoin or like Retin-A? I wanted to get into using like retinols and stuff. For some reason, she didn't want to give it to me. I mean, I explained that I'm very clued in with skincare and I've, done a lot of research on it, I know not to go too hard in the beginning, etc, etc. But she wanted me to try a different treatment for my acne first before going on to that. Um, I did say like I wanted it for the sort of anti-aging benefits as well. But she was like, you're only 28. And I'm like, yeah, but get started early. You know, she might let me get it eventually. But she wanted me to try a topical antibiotic because I'd never tried one in my life before on my acne. I always just dealt with acne, like just kind of put up with it. I had very minor acne, like it really was just in this area. It wasn't as bad as like a lot of people get it, but it was just persistent. I kind of have always dealt with it and I'd go through some periods, maybe like two or three months within a year where it'd be clear and then it'd be horrible the rest of the time. So this is a topical antibiotic, which I'm not a huge fan of the fact that it's an antibiotic because I feel like even though it's topical and I'm not ingesting it, my body will still be absorbing it and I worry about antibiotic resistance. I've only been doing, using it for two months on my face. It's obviously cleared up my skin so well because it's the only thing I really changed and I've been traveling and stuff, which often wreaks havoc with your skin. My skin has been so good. So I think it has really helped. I just apply like a little amount of that. It's like a lotion and just particularly focus it around here, particularly under here. I get a lot of breakouts still under here because it's my violin set. So obviously a lot of bacteria and stuff live on my instrument. <laughs> I need to buy like antibacterial wipes for it, but I also don't want to use those on my violin. So I'm kind of like, I think I just have to put up with breaking out under here. Um, and then I'll just sort of rub whatever's left over around the rest of my face. And she said that I could use it in conjunction with 
benzoyl peroxide. The two work quite well together. I was already using a benzoyl peroxide gel, which I've decanted a little bit into a little container, BP. Um, this is a 5% cream and I think the combination of the two is quite good. I just dip like a tiny bit sort of on my chin area, as I say. My skin is so used to this, like it could be a little bit um, strong in the beginning. You kind of want to dilute it a bit, I think, initially. But my skin is very used to it now. Um, I'm too scared to kind of stop using it, but I feel like I probably should. But again, I want to go talk to my doctor. But that is what I've been mainly using to really treat my breakouts because traditional skincare routines just weren't cutting it. I could get my skin feeling really juicy and moisturized with over-the-counter beauty products and stuff, but I couldn't fix my acne. So that is why I went to my doctor finally and was just like, help me. And then I'll just apply a moisturizer. And most days I was using like my Clinique Moisture Surge that I used in the morning. Um, if I felt like I wanted something a little extra, I could apply that and then use a little bit of I've got a macadamia oil which I really love just like one or two drops of this just gives my skin a little bit more moisture so if I'm feeling a little bit dry which particularly after taking like a long flight it's quite helpful for and if my skin's feeling quite dehydrated like lacking water I would use a little bit of the ordinary hyaluronic acid 2% which I probably typically use more in the mornings so that's typically when I like more hydrating products and at night I prefer more moisturizing products but I also wanted to talk about this little guy. <laughs> this is a little stack of travel sort of mini containers from Muji. It comes as a little stack and they all connect together. And this has my face masks in it. So the top three are all ones from the brand I'm From, which is a Korean brand. So I've got the Honey Mask, the Vitamin Tree Mask, and the Volcanic Mask. I love particularly these two. The, the Vitamin Tree one I'm still a bit unsure about. It smells like kind of crap and <laughs> it looks like baby poo on your face and I didn't see like dramatic results with it whereas I see really good things with these two so yeah highly recommend those but I'll talk about those properly in another video. On the bottom I actually have a little bit of the Clinique Moisture Surge Overnight Mask which is basically just a thick night cream and this is why I also like to put on occasionally if my skin is really needing a treat so I'm going to put some on tonight because I can. <laughs> So I just decanted a little bit in there. And this is, yeah, as I say, like a nice thick night cream, really nourishing. Like I wake up in the morning, my skin still feels almost like it's kind of got a thin layer of product on it, which some people might not like that feeling. Um, but it feels like it really nourishes my skin and almost puts like a protective barrier over it to prevent transepidermal water loss. It's quite occlusive. But it doesn't seem to be blocking my pores because my skin is very clear. I don't have any extra like blackheads or anything and I'm not obviously not breaking out so it feels like it's working really well for my skin I know some people like to use this product actually just as a night cream itself I don't feel like my skin necessarily needs that but every few days I like to give it a little something extra especially if I've used like the clay mask or something that is a little bit drying to really like clarify my skin and then going with something really hydrating was quite nice or like as I said earlier I was in the spa and sauna which can be quite drying and that is my nighttime skincare routine so I hope you enjoyed seeing what my travel skincare routine has been over the last few months it's been two months I've been on the road with just a very short like three days back in Melbourne which you would have seen from the vlog that just went out the other day. It's been such an amazing time, but I am very much looking forward to getting back into kind of a bit of routine again. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.